We've been here for 10 years. We were appointed straight out of college um, to plant a church down here. What we've done is partner with people. As we find people, we stay with people. And uh, as we build relationships, kind of uh, initiatives grow out of those relationships. My name's Tani and I'm from the Ballerin Peninsula Salvation Army and I've grown up in the Greater Geelong region my whole life. Halfway through year 12, decided that I would go and study at Federation Uni in Ballarat. But then it didn't really work out for me too well. My passion just started to fade and I just really wasn't enjoying it anymore. I was just randomly scrolling through my Facebook feed one day and in my local community page I saw a post from Peter Hobbs. We were asking for people to help us with the Red Shield appeal. So she said, oh yeah, I want to help. I'd love to come and help man a static um, table at one of the shops. Then he invited me to come along for the youth group and the outreach fan um, that following Friday. I was really welcomed by the community and everyone here was just so inclusive and I really felt like I belonged here. She's just got a beautiful heart, a heart for people and a heart for mission. And she has really just fit right in here and has just embraced, you know, our, our children that we work with and our youth. She's a great mentor and leader within the community now. I've really been connected to my purpose now with the Salvation Army. I'm surrounded by a community that's really just going to help me grow in my faith. Now I'm doing the outreach van. I'm now mentoring young kids at the primary school. I'm also on the Red Shield Appeal Committee now. Yeah, it's an amazing opportunity for me. The catalyst for the outreach van was some homeless people just up here in Drysdale. A local business gave us a call to say, do you know that there's a homeless person at the front of our shop? I'm like, no. Because it's the Bellarine Peninsula, there's so many places where people can hide. And this was the first kind of obvious um, evidence of homelessness on, um, outside of couch surfing in our community. A small team of us started to go out every Friday night and just build relationships with people. And, and as that team has expanded and other people have got involved, we now, um, you know, there's about 35 volunteers that actually are on a roster where we, we just head out every week and build relationships. We visited a lady a few weeks ago during um, the COVID uh, operations because uh, we noticed her roof had been damaged through, through a storm. And as we knocked on the door, she, she was literally about to kill herself. She was literally about to overdose. And, and we're like, whoa, how good's the timing? Hello. 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 How are you going? Good, how are you? Yeah, good. good. We're just good checking in. How are you? Good to see you. I just wanted to come past and say hello. Thank this is you. How you're doing? Thank you. It's nice. Yeah. I'm all good. Have they fixed your roof yet? No, but apparently scaffold is going up next. Oh, oh right. that's, good. that's great. The first time I went out on the outreach van, I absolutely loved it. I was surrounded by people that really helped me embrace what they're all about and just go out there and help people because that's what I absolutely loved. It's really just putting our faith into action. I really learnt that I am braver and stronger than I probably ever imagined I could be because like I'm out here serving people in the darkest moments when I didn't think I was equipped. I didn't think I was ready for this. I was like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna throw myself in the deep end here. Um, but I did and then now like this is where I am. There's a beautiful couple called Dave and Dee who we've been visiting for like six years and their life is very broken and uh, we've been able to just love them through, through many ups and downs, you know, from them being homeless in a tent uh, to literally going through freezing cold winters and they've just got like a little makeshift fire going and, and just to be able to turn up and, and love them. That's the beauty and the reality of following Jesus is we're following his lead, you know, wherever he went, 
weird things happened where the only explanation was that that the father was at work and that's how we that's how we model that reality here and there's so many stories of people's lives who have experienced that reality they can't explain it and they stay with us too because they go there's something about it and then over time they go I want that I want to be part of this